All righty. In today's video, I thought I would discuss the cons that are being talked about online about Elp and Fury. Um, for those of you that have been watching every YouTuber's possible videos on this ride, there are a lot of cons that people are bringing up. They're all very similar. A lot of people are super wowed by the ride, but there are a few concerns, and I obviously have some concerns as well. But I'm here to talk about the concerns and also provide context to those concerns as well. Um, I've done a lot of research and I've gone over the numbers and compared this attraction to a lot of popular attractions out there. And I can definitely tell you guys that this ride is heavily getting overlooked. Um, and people are definitely focusing a little too harshly on some of the cons. But let's go over all the cons and you for yourself can make that decision. So let's go over one of my main concerns myself. So this is something that I've talked about in my Discord server, something that I'm super concerned about, and that is the number of trains. And not for the reason that you might think. I'm concerned that there are two trains because two trains can be uh, detrimental to operations. Imagine a train breaks down or requires maintenance and they need to go down to one train ops on a brand new roller coaster in its opening year. So I'm really hoping that Canada's Wonderland has three trains, not running, but two trains on the track and a third train that is off on the maintenance bay ready to be transferred on if they needed to transfer a train off for maintenance. Because if not, that really will be consequential for the operations of Elp and Fury. So let's go over some of the analysis online. Um, and one of the ones that I've seen a lot is too many inversions and not enough airtime. So my personal opinion on that is we have Behemoth and Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. Those are very airtime out and back uh, layout designs. And I think that we were really lacking a heavily inversion based roller coaster. And that Elp and Fury really provides what we were missing at our park. Um, a very low to the ground, heavily inverting powerhouse of a launch coaster. So I think this fills the gap very nicely, especially in the thin plot of land that they've designed this. Um, and I just love the snake-like maneuvers of it intertwining with itself. So I definitely think that, you know, commenting on it being too heavily inversion-based... Um, and not having airtime, it's a little overlooking what it was meant to do. Um, and just remember that uh, inversions do also provide airtime. So uh, one other thing is the repetitive inversions. Well, I'd like to point out <laughs> that you already know, but it has three brand new custom designed inversions that we've never seen before. Um, so I just think it's, you know, a slight overlook to be like, oh, it's like the same uh, inversions over and over again. Well, simply not true. So a lot of people have been talking about the manufacturer and how it should have been Vacoma, Mock, Intamin. Um, and for those of you that remember my coverage, I clued in or heard very early on that it could be Premier. And I myself wasn't a fan. But I slowly started to realize as I've been hearing from a lot of people that they are some of the smoothest coasters out there. And that the only flaw with Premier is their train design. And that's good news, in my opinion, because from what we can tell so far, uh, there is slight modifications to our trains compared to other premier coasters. So it looks like that giant um, triangular shaped structure, as you saw in my previous video of me getting in, um, isn't going to be there. It looks like it might have slightly wider seats. There is no comfort colors, as confirmed by the park. And I'm going to be getting final confirmation as well on whether this ride will have seatbelts or not because apparently Cedar Fair doesn't use seatbelts on their new rides anymore. And if this is the case, this will definitely help with the load and unload process of our coaster and definitely make it a lot easier to get in and out as well. But as you saw in my video of me getting in and out of a premier coaster, they're not as difficult as people are making them seem. I'm six foot three and a very large dude if you've seen some of my videos. And I've had, I got on that ride very easily and I wasn't like super restrictive. Obviously it could be a little more comfort, comfortable, but it wasn't as bad as people were making it out to seem. So let's get into the heavy topic, capacity. So I'm going to put on the screen the video of the timer um, that confirms it's about a minute and 10 seconds to minute and 20 seconds. And then we're averaging 
um, an estimated 40 seconds of a load procedure. Now, we could obviously get maybe down to 30 seconds, but you have to remember, we're talking about Wonderland's clientele here. And if you've been to Wonderland, you've noticed that rides like Leviathan that should be pulling like 1,400, 1,300 guests per hour. They're only pulling about 900, 1,000, maybe 1,100 guests per hour as well. And that's because of guest habits as well. So based off of the calculations here on the screen, the equation to calculate capacity, we're looking at about 1,080 riders per hour using the equation of persons per hour. And I want to point out that that is a higher persons per hour than a coaster like Maverick. So Maverick is listed on the manufacturer's website as potentially being able to bring in like 1,200, 1,300. I can't remember what it was, guess per hour. But the actual theoretical is 960, if I'm not mistaken, 980. Um, guess per hour that the park actually gets so I just wanted to point that out because Maverick is also a significant attraction at Cedar Point um, that also has significant attendance and if they can get away with having a coaster with lesser um, capacity so can we um, but I do want to point out that 1080 riders per hour um, and the chance of it slightly maybe being higher than that obviously if it doesn't come down to one train needs to get transferred off and weather and whether there's going to be a locker system um, and metal detectors or just bin system like Yukon, it all comes down to that. So while Alpen Fury is brand new and it is definitely open to critique, I do want to just point out that uh, the, some of the points that I were trying to describe in this video is just to remind people that I definitely felt like Alpen Fury was receiving a lot more critique than it maybe should have been. Um, again, there are a lot of rides out there like Maverick that have low capacity just like this. Um, this is a roller coaster that Wonderland needed with heavy inversions and high speed and very low to the ground. Um, and that even big rides like B&M's that boast really big um, capacity numbers at a park like Wonderland, they aren't really able to pull those numbers despite being able to on the typical. It's a, it's a park that with the seat belts and the bin systems and guests having to place their loose articles in the bins, it just hasn't worked out in the park's favor. So I'm really hoping for a locker system or a Yukon Striker bin system at minimum. With it going over the paths, I really do think that we're gonna be looking at a locker system with potential metal detectors. And if the ride also has no seat belts, um, and it definitely has no co comfort collars. We're really looking at that 1,080, maybe 1,200 um, riders max um, in best conditions possible um, for operations. So really hoping that uh, we are looking at a coaster like that because that would erase everyone's concerns. But hopefully this video helped answer any of your questions that maybe you had on some of the cons on the ride or helped calm you down. Um, comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about Alpen Fury, and I'll try and answer them if I can. Um, anyways, thank you so much. Have a good one, guys. Bye.